There's no date of birth on record for Silo, and even if we want to theorize when he was born, that would all but be impossible, since as we come to find out, was a cloned and updated version of himself over and over again. In essence, since we don't know which Silo is the original, we can't guesstimate even his birth. However, when Silo references the Clone Wars in 2015's Vader series issue number 6, we can maybe pinpoint his birth to somewhere around 50 to 60 years before the Battle of Yavin. During the time leading up to the Battle of Yavin, he spent his time researching the creation of life, both a different twist. See, unlike Darth Plagueis, Silo believed that the Force was obsolete, and toyed with the creation of life, and the prolonging of life, through cybernetic augmentation. Silo went to extreme lengths to perform his research, even utilizing banned scientific parts. Before the fall of the Republic, his experiments were primarily funded by the wealthy Astarte family from Selenon. The wealth from the family allowed him to create cloned personality matrices, along with memory banks and other complex logarithms. In his research, he made himself immortal in a different way with a different belief system, that with the science of his day, he could prolong his life. He theorized that when his old bodies would die, he would simply upgrade into a new body at his research facility, forever carrying on. Sort of reminds you of Lord Valkorion, the Great Emperor in a way. On or immediately after 19 BBY, Silo did adopt the Astarte family twins after the fall of the Republic for their protection. In sum, the Astarte family feared for their children's lives after they supported the recently fallen Separatist movement. Now this is where things become super interesting. After Obi-Wan nearly ended Vader's life on Mustafar on 19 BBY, Palpatine knew immediately that Vader required more than just a force to save his life. During that famous surgery, Palpatine actually recruited Silo as one of the doctors, and under his employ operated on Vader and actually saved Vader's life. Sometime either before or around 19 BBY, Silo furthered his personal experiments, notably enhancing the Star Children. Morin and Island, and other subjects including a General Grievous inspired Mon Calamari named Carbon. Another fascinating enhancement came with the Death Star scientist named Tulan, where Silo enhanced her brain to greater heights while also linking her with her own drone force. Other technological advancements even led to the modifications or deletion of feelings, like pain, believing that his research could be applied to any organism. During the lead up to the Battle of Yavin, and the destruction of the Death Star, Silo's reputation and relationships were extremely highly regarded by the Empire's top scientists. His private work and work with the Empire made him a very notable person among the scientific elite. In the lead up to the Battle of Yavin, Silo also headed his own program under the Tarkin Initiative. There he furthered his research for the Empire, but also became more enthralled with the idea of cyborgs that would replace Force users. Around 0-3 to three years ABY, or after the Battle of Yavin, Palpatine, as well documented in the Vader series, became increasingly frustrated with his apprentice's failure, most notably the Death Star failure. As a result, he recruited Silo again, and wished to be an audience to the experience Silo was working on as Palpatine pondered Vader replacements or additional enforcers. Now, out of curiosity, I did some research and consulted with the wiki fandom for Silo. By that time, it appears Silo was now in the fourth iteration of himself. We don't have any specific information on how the first three iterations died or ceased to exist, but I imagine it had something to do with the requisition of parts and other illegal things. The pressure ramped up on Silo as Vader sent something amiss with the Emperor and his secret dealings. As a result, Silo knew a bounty hunter was tracking him at the Order of Vader and was captured by Black Santan before he arrived at his base. Triple Zero kills Silo 4 and Number 5 is activated. Silo 5 finds Vader at his base battling the Astar Twins and is safe from Vader as the Emperor appears to review Silo's project. After seemingly impressing Palpatine, he is appointed again to serve in the Imperial military. At this point, Silo seeks to undermine Vader so that his projects can take Vader's place. In Silo's quest for power, he actually betrays the Empire and informs the rebels of Vader's whereabouts, creating a sabotage. During the sabotage, Aloni, the sister, reveals Silo's plans and his treachery. Silo and his subjects are thus forced to flee since they are designated as traitors. With the sabotage failing, Silo plays right into the Emperor's hands. Palpatine reveals to Vader that he wanted to get rid of Silo, but needed Silo to overstep his boundaries and play his hand with his lust for power to justify killing him. Palpatine feared that killing Silo without cause would cause a schism in the scientific community, since he had so many deep ties to the galaxy's top scientists, many who were deeply entrenched in the Death Star program. Silo, with little options left, attempts to hijack a Star Destroyer, essentially staging a coup of the Empire. With Silo's projects being no match for Vader, and Vader mind-tricking the pilot into plotting a course into the nearby sun, Silo's last clones desperately try to change the course, but are unsuccessful, as the Destroyer plunges into the sun, claiming the Silo's life. And so it seems that Silo's journey has come to a close. But did it? Is this the last we see of Silo? Perhaps another body was activated elsewhere, and maybe the dark sciences are a pathway to many abilities. Some consider to be unnatural. Let's grow this community together. If you like this video, please don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day, and may the Force be with you.